One or two more things I think are really important I've noticed that are even gender differences. I've noticed a lot of systems that have sort of touched on interaction. One, they don't remember anything about the user, which I think is a big shame. And the second thing is that they're not really interested in third parties. And yet I found when I look at the transcripts of female students who've used the program, so many of them mention a third person even right off the bat. So if I say something like, my mother's name is Laura, And then I'll say something like, um, she is in Maryland. I will remember that Laura is in Maryland. So he's picked up this information, and then if I say later, and also notice I said she is. So we don't go around repeating people's first names all the time. I mentioned Laura, and then after that I said she, and I might even say more, like she is uh, a, a doctor. And then we'll ask, what has he learned about Laura? So let's see, tell me about Laura. You told me Laura exists and is in Maryland, and is a doctor. So there it's absorbs some social information that it can use later. So I think I've done, if you've got an idea now, a little bit of a tour, and you've seen some of the body language and so on. Oh, one more body language. Um, what is 2.1 plus? Uh, 9.7. So he uses his hands. 9.1, 9.7 is 11.8. Notice he uses his hands in order to engage the counting. So he's not two, but the hands sort of suggest that he's counting or engaging in some kind of mental activity, even though that's a childlike quality to it. And that might actually help, because then people sort of feel, well, it's doing some, you know, people like kids, generally speaking, so they can relate to that. So what else is going on here? Um, can we take this system and can we put it in something else? So just to give you a sense of what it remembers and what it's learned, uh, and you can see this when you go to the socialbot.com website, um, there is a, oh, we need to actually say goodbye. We will talk again. Next time I'll remember to have him say ciao. If I told them, I speak Italian. And then, let's see, it creates a little history file. And this history file is something that, if this were a commercial product that the person is uh, interacting with, then that commercial product will retain all this information that it's learned about the person during the interaction. So not just the sort of, you know, how many conversations have we had, and, and what, here's what time is the conversation, and the fact that I'm male, and my name is Dario, and uh, information about Laura, it's remembered that, and it also remembers that uh, I even said hello, whereas it uh, said hello is true. I find women actually say hello more often than men. And the interesting thing, um, I found, as compared to women who will do those things like uh, mentioning the third person and being sort of friendly socially, male users more likely to uh, do two things. They will challenge the system to find out how quickly they can break it. They treat it as a machine, so they won't respond to its social gestures. And they usually try and input some kind of sex jokes or something like that, or get something out of it a few minutes after interacting with it. So those are things to keep in mind when designing, too. I think that there are probably some might be cultural differences as well as, as gender differences. So it has this information, and we could use this uh, again if we wanted to in the future, demographic information and whatnot. I'll show you the female faces, and in how the system works, the animation is it has a neutral face, and then it shifts in other faces uh, within the sequence of, of the neutral face, and before it returns to that. So here's our female, and each of these clips is very short, it just repeats a single behavior in two seconds, and so if we wanted to string multiple ones together, that's what we need to do. And then here's her anger, and notice it's a different anger than him. So he actually used a fist, the male one, where she's pointing instead. I actually thought of people I knew, male and female, and that's where I got the... Uh... Also, she has an emotion he doesn't have, an expression, which is disgust. So she snorts her nose a little bit. Um, needless to say, the person I modeled this after doesn't know that I actually did this. She'd probably be concerned if these were the body language uh, cues that I picked up. 
And uh, then one, which is a little bit different, is she plays with her hair a little bit too. And that's part of a, a playful or a flirtatious gesture. In terms of applications, actually students in my lab have spent four or five weeks creating each of them their own individual social bot that worked around a particular uh, role or activity. So for example, being a cashier or an astrologer or a medical technician for a particular disease area where it could get, ask questions and then give answers to the person. And um, let's see, what were some other ones? Criminal. Criminal was actually very popular. And um, let's see, a frat boy. So after the fraternity or sorority party, and you have people, and college students interacting with each other, what kind of topics uh, do people bring up and want to talk about? And, it just, and many of them were really quite humorous, so being able to add in some humor and some element to people's personalities. When I ask the people, what is the most, the application you would want the most? And they don't immediately think of, oh, put it in my car, or put it on my refrigerator or something to talk to. I've never heard anyone say I want an animated character on the computer, by the way. Nobody has said, I need somebody to entertain me while I'm working on the computer. They all think of other kind of machines in our environment that are not interactive and maybe they'd like to be. Nonetheless, so the most common desire I hear from people is that they would like a duplicate of themselves to answer email. And that doesn't really involve any kind of verbal or visual interaction, but um, though that, that does demonstrate that there's sort of our lives are so there's so much demand all the time, like needing to be in two places at once, London and Italy, then uh, how do we create duplicates of ourselves to be there? So I hope this has given you some sense of the sort of ideas that went through my head and, and are here in the software. The software is designed to be very easy to program and use because I have freshmen and sophomores, students who are not engineers, they're not programmers, they're art design, they're English students, um, all different backgrounds, psychology students, and they really enjoy being able to create something in a very sort of simple scripting language that I've developed over the years. Because, you know, technology can get complex, but it's always nice when there's an equal push to make it simple. Um, please uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. And uh, again, I hope all of you have a wonderful time at the conference. Thank you very much for listening.